preparedness for COVID-19 infection at the time of an emergent cesarean delivery. Dr. Heinrichs and Dr. Muffley have no financial disclosures. In 2020, ACOG released simulation scenarios for vaginal delivery and screening on COVID-19 patients. The objective of this video is to simulate an emergent cesarean delivery requiring general endotracheal anesthesia for COVID-19 positive multigravida and to address caring for a mother and an infant in an operating room with aerosolized infection. Conventional PPE protocols are being strengthened to combat the transmission of the COVID-19 virus. ACOG and the American College of Surgeons have adapted the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention guidelines for the conduct of surgery in patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19. Obstetrician gynecologists should consult these PPE guidelines frequently because new information is to be expected. One of the most important parts of PPE is a mask or respirator. A surgical mask to help reduce the risk of large particles expelled by the wearer, such as spit or mucus, and it fits loosely and leaves gaps between the mask and face. Whereas a respirator helps reduce the surgeon's exposure to certain particles like virus particles, it is designed to fit tightly and create a seal between the face and the respirator, forcing air to go through the filter. Respirators should be refit every two years or if you gain or lose more than 10 pounds. Surgeons should not have facial hair when wearing respirators. Lastly, there are elastomeric respirators, and these are quite comfortable to wear compared to the N95. Next, we'll move on to PPE for eye protection. Pictured here are safety glasses. Safety goggles do provide better eye protection due to the seal between the skin and the goggle plastic. Pictured here is a disposable one-piece face and neck length face shield visor assembly with a foam forehead cushion and an elastic strap. The disposable face shield covers the front and sides of the face for splash hazards. The surgeon has it labeled with their initials for reuse at a later time. Wearing prescription glasses are not appropriate PPE because they do not cover the sides of the face PPE donning must be performed in the proper order and monitored by the team members, with the attending surgeon checking every person as they come in. Once the door to the operating room is closed, we recommend that no staff or equipment be passed in or out until the end of the procedure. In our simulation, the patient required general endotracheal anesthesia to complete the cesarean section rapidly. Intubation of a patient with COVID-19 is a high-risk procedure because of forceful aerosol generation and operator proximity. In an emergency, we forego the recommended 10-minute wait time between intubation and surgery. 10 minutes is based on the amount of time for air cycling in our operating rooms. It may differ for your institution. The risk of aerosol generation should be mitigated and by removing all non-essential individuals from the room. And in our drills, we typically use two nurses, two surgeons, and two anesthesia providers to perform the procedure. Pediatrics personnel in the operating room is limited to three people, a provider, a nurse, and a respiratory therapist. The pediatrics pharmacist is to wait outside the operating room, and PPE is provided for all pediatrics providers. A T-piece resuscitator is available, and resuscitation is done with an anesthesia bag. If the baby is active and well-appearing, we will immediately cord clamp, bring the baby to the warmer for drying and stimulation. An RN outside the room will prep the isolette, place the baby without blankets, hats, or any equipment into the isolette, doff PPE, and transfer to the pediatrics floor. 
If the baby needs respiratory support, there will be immediate cord clamping, bringing the baby to the warmer for drying and stimulation, providing necessary respiratory support within the room. The nurse and respiratory therapist will prep the isolate and the T-piece resuscitator. Once stable on respiratory support, the baby will be removed from all blankets and get as close to the anteroom door as possible. We will leave the endotracheal tube in place with the respiratory viral filter in line and reconnect to respiratory support with the viral filter in place. The patient is to be extubated and all providers should not leave the room until 10 minutes following this. The operating room will then be closed for two hours. We place a piece of tape across the door with the time and date written on it for this purpose. The patient is moved from the operating room to her negative pressure single room with a surgical mask in place. There's limited experience with aerosolized diseases like COVID-19 on labor and delivery. There are significant preparations needed to inform all members of the labor and delivery team regarding plans for cesarean delivery of a COVID-19 positive patient. An abundance of caution is needed when doffing to avoid self-inoculation.